This is Brian Johnson. He's spending millions of dollars to reverse his age. After doing a ton of research on his protocol, I decided to spend 75 days eating the exact same diet as Brian. His diet's pretty intense. You can't just order this stuff at restaurants. Here's where things get interesting. Today is day 36 of being on Brian Johnson's diet and I'm about to fly all the way across the country and spend four days away from home. I decided to freeze four days worth of meal preps and bring them in my checked bag so that I can stay on Brian Johnson's diet. This is what it's like to travel on Brian Johnson's Blueprint Diet. I like to fly in and out of Atlanta because you can get direct flights to almost anywhere. Once I got to airport parking, I ate nutty pudding. So I'm in the parking lot, about to go to the airport. I'm steaming my nutty pudding though before I get on the plane. I'm doing this for you guys. Stick into my diet. I've got all my meal preps in my bag. I did not have a lot of time, so I hustled to my gate and boarded my flight to Los Angeles. In my check bag, I only packed the Green Giant, Super Veggie, and Nutty Pudding. That meant that every day I was responsible for coming up with my third meal. I didn't want to overcomplicate things, so I came up with a few guidelines to stick to for that third meal. One, stay vegan and gluten-free. Two, base the third meal on veggies, nuts, and berries. Three, eat all meals within a six-hour window. When I arrived in LA, I had some time to kill, so I went to the Delta Sky Club and ate my third meal there. I ended up having a salad with some hummus, olives, and a bunch of steamed veggies. This was all delicious, and to be honest, it was a nice change from my typical third meal of the day. I flew out to California because a great friend from college was getting married. Look at this. What's up, dude? I was one of the groomsmen, so I came out early to hang out with the boys. On the morning of my first day in California, we decided to go for a sunrise surf session. I decided to eat super veggie on the drive to the beach. I didn't have time to heat it up, so it was still pretty frozen. When I first started on Brian Johnson's diet, it was pretty hard to eat super veggie. I've gotten to the point where I really like it and even look forward to it. Eating it frozen was not great though. Later that day, we drove over to an Airbnb closer to the wedding venue, and that's where we spent the next three nights. A bunch of the groom's extended family stayed with us at the Airbnb, and everyone ate meals together. Most mornings I would wake up, work out, then eat Super Veggie and the Green Giant before going over to the main house and hanging out with everyone. This is everything for the Green Giant. I don't recommend Super Veggie cold. At breakfast, I would try to eat berries and nuts while hanging out and talking to people. Around 9.30 or 10 a.m., I would eat nutty pudding. Lunch was somewhere around 12 or 12.30. At lunch, I would usually have a salad with some more nuts. If there were any berries left over from breakfast, I would eat those as well. Now that I've been on Brian Johnson's diet for a while, it's not that hard to skip dinner. What's interesting is that it sort of makes people uncomfortable when you're sitting at dinner with an empty plate. I was meeting a lot of the groom's extended family for the first time and they didn't know why I wasn't eating dinner. So it always started up some cool conversation around health or longevity. This was fun. I learned a lot of interesting things and had some cool conversations. I think it's interesting to sit back and observe how people react to somebody not eating. I recently realized that Brian will save up about 500 calories if he plans to go out to eat with people. He orders steamed veggies or a salad of some sort. If I plan to do this diet for the rest of my life, I would definitely adopt this practice. I don't ever want people to think that I don't appreciate their food or that I'm judging them by not eating with them. By having a plate piled full of steamed veggies, you would avoid the scrutiny that comes with an empty plate. On this trip, I packed four days worth of food because that's all I was supposed to need. About three hours into my return flight, the pilot comes on and announces that we're going to have to land in St. Louis instead of Atlanta because there was some really bad storms in Atlanta and a bunch of planes were grounded. Because a bunch of planes are grounded, there's no gates open in Atlanta. So our plane was forced to land in St. Louis instead. Fortunately, Delta booked me a hotel. I'm super grateful for that. Here's where things get interesting. I ate the last of my meal preps yesterday morning. So I decided to improvise. To start things off, I ate the last of the food I brought with me, which was four Brazil nuts and half an ounce of 100% dark chocolate. This is the last piece of 100% dark chocolate that I brought with me on the trip, so. Breakfast of champions. So here's the plan for today. My flight's leaving at 10.05 from St. Louis to Atlanta. I'm still at the hotel. I just went and scouted the breakfast and there was like four pieces of fruit and it was pretty much all pastries, bacon, that kind of stuff. So that's not really an option. This will be fun. 
At the airport in St. Louis, I was able to find two bags of nuts that looked pretty good. One of them was about 490 calories of raw almonds, and the other bag was about 490 calories of unsalted cashews. When I got to Atlanta, I stopped in the Sky Club and got a bowl of black beans, roasted potatoes, and pumpkin seeds. I tried to find some fresh berries in the airport. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any. This delay wasn't ideal for everyone on the plane and me and my diet, but it was a good reminder that you have to do your best and just improvise in situations like that. If you've watched some of my other content, then you know that sleep and exercise are really important to me. I'm doing a modified version of Brian's sleep routine and a modified version of his workout routine as well. On this trip, I try my best to get great sleep, but jet lag got the best of me. California is three hours behind Tennessee where I live. Most nights I got to bed around 9.30 p.m. My body was still on East Coast time, so it would naturally wake me up at 4 a.m. and be like, all right, let's go, man. Every day I was traveling, I worked out for at least an hour and a half in some capacity. I went surfing on day one. Most days I would go for a jog or a walk and do some body weight exercises. If you wanna know more about how I've modified Brian Johnson's workout routine, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video on it. After this experience, I really understand why Brian doesn't travel much on Blueprint. It's already difficult to do the things that Brian does. It's a lot more difficult to do them in an uncontrolled environment. Is it worth it? Ultimately, I think so. It can be stressful. It can be hard to say no to a piece of cheesecake or a warm brownie. But in the end, it feels better to say no. Doing this routine and being on this diet has been a constant reminder that it's better to avoid temporary pleasure in pursuit of long-term gains. Thanks for following along. If you wanna see what my first 30 days on Brian Johnson's Blueprint routine looked like, make sure to check this video out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.